So the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line coach spoke up about the recent addition of Orlando Brown to the offensive line. Now, if you guys remember a couple months ago, we talked about the offensive line coach actually said that he did not expect the Bengals to do anything in free agency. He was kind of expecting the Bengals to have almost the same exact roster on the offensive line as it did this season. And he really had no problem with it and he thought it was absolutely fine. Nonetheless, though, they did ask him about the addition to the left tackle, Orlando Brown, just being signed, and this is what he had to say. It really kind of came out of nowhere, Pollock said via the Cincinnati Inquirer. I was not expecting us to be in the position to do anything for anyone of his caliber. It just kind of came on our radar, with me anyway, the day that we got the deal done. It was exciting, they said. Hey, to, uh, take a look at this guy. He might be in play. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, really? Wow. So it was surprising. It was fantastic. It was an exciting day for the Bengals. The arrival of Brown have resulted in the... Um, incumbent left tackle Jonah Williams asking for a trade. Pollock says he loved to have both Brown and Williams in the Bengals offensive room line room in 2023. I've reached out to Jonah, Pollock said. I don't really want to uh I don't want to really spend a lot of time talking about that. I love to coach Jonah. I love coaching him. There's an old saying that there's a great game in a um uh, that this is a great game in a crazy business. I hope we, I, we get to coach him. He's a good football player. He has a bright future. Hopefully it's still with the Bengals in 2023. Whether Williams' future in the Cincinnati remains to be seen. But that's clear that the Bengals are all in on Brown at left tackle. And to be honest. Again like I said before. Right now the speculation is that they are going to be ending up trading um, Jonah Williams. Uh, based on what I have heard, the best the Bengals could get is probably a fifth round pick, maybe a sixth round pick. And to be honest, that would be an absolute W. But again, you just have to find a team that wants to take on his contract. And at this moment in time, it looks like now that he's reaching out different teams, he might be able to actually get that uh, team to, you know, trade for him. So with that being said, let's go ahead and just do this trade, hypothetically speaking. Keep in mind, whoever does trade for him has to take on that $12.6 million guarantee, which is not, you know, not something that a lot of people are going to want to take on. Uh, so let's actually go off and tackle Jonah Williams. Let's say, for example, he got traded to someone, I don't know, like, uh, who needs tackle? I'll say the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't think Pittsburgh's going to do it. I know the Browns need a tackle, but I don't think the Browns will take on his contract, although Cleveland would be the one team that would uh, do something like this. Um, give me... Oh, I know the Giants need a tackle. Let's do the Giants. We're going to do a, a sixth-round pick. Actually, let's, yeah, let's do a, a fifth-round pick for the New York Giants. Offer a trade. Obviously, in real life, I don't think they would accept this. But, you know, they would have to package some uh, picks up to maybe give them a seventh. Maybe Jenna Williams and then get the fifth or something. But with that being said, though, uh, as always, now that we, uh, you guys did go ahead and pick up Orlando Brown, right? You got that solidified. If you do trade Jonah Williams, here's where you could also go again for tackle in the first round. The reason why I say this is because of the fact, you got to keep in mind, that if you lose Jonah Williams, Orlando Brown might not be ready to go week one. Probably won't be with his ACL tear. So you're going to need someone the first couple weeks of the season. If Jonah Williams is not available, you're going to want to get somebody else. Now, Dewan Brown obviously is the fan favorite we've all talked about. But I'll be honest with you, especially at this pick right here. I'm going to keep to my guns here. I was I was kept to my guns when it came to... Um, what's the name? When it came to Jermaine Pratt coming back to Cincy, I'm going to remain the same when it comes to Donnell Washington staying with the Cincinnati Bengals here. 
um, with that first round pick. I still love that pick more than anything. Could he go later? It's possible. Right now he's being mocked early second, kind of mid, late second. Uh, they could even give him the second round pick. Obviously they know more than I do when it comes to, you know, what teams are interested in when it comes to him, but... I'm going to tell you right now, absolutely love him here. Now, here's a player that I'm interested in a lot. Because the second round, you could go with someone like Matt, Matthew Bergeron. Bergeron. And you're going to have to make him right tackle, right? He's played left tackle for pretty much the last two seasons exclusively at Syracuse. But he did play right tackle a little bit back in 2020. Um... I would not be against the idea of trying to move him to right tackle here. It does say he has played both sides of the line um, in his career and has a total of and has all the tools to stay at tackle. A move to God doesn't seem like it would improve his performance. So I'm going to have them take Matthew here and solidify the offensive line, make Matthew the right tackle. Are you going to cut Collins? It's possible. Are you going to keep him? Again, like I said, very possible. Alright, so now in the third round here. Um, wait, hold up. Oh my god, the Ravens took Call of Books from Bowling Green. You guys have been watching any of my mock drafts. You already know I've taken him in every single mock draft possible in third round for, for the Bengals. That is that is so annoying. That is so that is so that is devious. That is absolutely devious. But you know what's not devious? them taking a replacement for Jesse Bates and that is going to be Jamie Robinson here perfect you know you lose out on the edge rusher you get yourself amazing safety in the third round god tier safety love that pick right there you know what when one door closes another door opens kind of how I look at when it comes to this kind of stuff all right so I'm probably going Hodges here I'll be honest with you Kind of get that Eli Apple replacement. They didn't get Taylor Rapp, so get a Eli Apple replacement. Uh, slash a Trey Flowers replacement. So now we have, obviously, two picks here because of the whole trade. Now I'm probably going running back here. I'm going to go with Dwayne McBride. And, oh, I'm probably going in this situation. You got me, keep in mind, they just signed Ford, right? So, I'm probably not too interested in a guard, but I really do like Chandler here. Yeah, I'm, I might go Chandler here. Especially in this situation. Fifth round, I mean, could also go, obviously, someone like, you know, uh, Charlie Weil is always off the board, is already off the board in the fifth round at this point. So, I might be interested in going with someone like an offensive guard here, just to see, you know, maybe he pans out for you guys. You guys are get a very solidified player. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to go with Chandler here. I think he's a really solid pick. Um, sixth round, I am definitely probably focusing on a pass rusher, I'll be honest with you. Uh, pretty much sixth round here. If the draft goes away this way. It's going right now. Uh, Quinn, oh, Quinnell John. I love Quinnell Johnson. I really do. But I'm probably going with Lonnie Phillips here um, out of Candace. I think he should be an absolute. He should be. He's going to be a project that Lou can absolutely start experimenting on. If you didn't know he was a mad scientist, that would sound so wrong. And the last pick of the NFL draft. Give me. Um, I'm gonna go Muhammad. I'm gonna go another. I might go the the defensive line for the Alabama guy there, if I'm being honest. Now, what they're gonna hate me on is that every time I do this mock draft, I always get great grades, except they always give me an F for Donnell Washington. I don't care. I'll be honest with you. I do not care. I think Donnell Washington is that good. Again, like I said, I might be in the minority there, and people might say, oh... He's not that good. You know, you're overrating him. I, I don't care. I think he has the intangibles. He's six foot seven. He is two. What's he? Six foot seven. I want to say he's like two four, 250. He's a monster. He can catch the ball. He can block. He was pretty much a glorified right tackle in college who could also play, you know, tight end. He could also outbox people. 
I mean, the guy is an absolute monster. I've been talking about him now. Literally since January, I've been talking about the Bengals taking him. And, you know, as the combine came around, he did go up in, you know, combine talk because of the fact that he had an amazing combine. It happens, you know, whenever someone has a really good combine, their, you know, kind of stock goes up. He had an amazing one-handed catch, which obviously interests a lot of people because, you know, when you're six foot seven, and if you can outbox someone and have an amazing one-handed catch on the sideline, you know, you're automatically going to be considered God tier and you're automatically going to be considered... You know, a player everybody is interested in. I mean, who's not interested in a six foot seven guy who could, you know, one hand catch it on near the sideline and make that grab amazingly, you know? So with that being said, guys, tell me down below your thoughts and opinions, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.